Um, I was first introduced to Amy Williams when I heard her speak on fatherlessness at the CCDA conference this past fall. Though I was tired, Amy's passion and energy caught my attention and the attention of the other Wheaton students attending the conference. Amy, who calls herself a hope dealer, lives and works as a gang intervention specialist in Humboldt Park, a Latino neighborhood on the west side of Chicago. After hearing Amy speak, we knew that we had to bring her to campus as she truly embodies the idea of knowing, loving, and serving her neighbors. Please join me in welcoming Amy Williams. As I see her, all I can see is pretty much a blur, wondering what may happen in my future. As I think to myself, if I keep walking down this dark path, always remembering all the bad things that happened in my past. As a few good memories pass through my mind, I come to believe this dark path I walk, I'm soon going to find myself laying in a dark black hole, thinking to myself, why didn't I listen to what I was told? As the pain inside me is not letting me be free, I don't know where to turn to or who to turn to. So as I sit, in my room, feeling down and blue. I always wish I could die. So I don't have to feel the tears that come down my eyes. And so I don't feel the pain in my heart that is just tearing me apart. And that's one of the poems that I wrote. And when I, I don't know, whenever I sit in there and I have nothing to do, I just sit there and I'll write. That young lady is in desperate need of a hope dealer. She definitely has dope dealers coming to her. When she needed something or when she was looking for help or, or looking for, for comfort, where were the hope dealers? Where was the church? And so, my name is Amy Williams, and um, I was born and raised in Maine. My mom is uh, half Irish, and my dad is black, so I'm Iraq. And um, <laughs> lived in North Carolina for a little while, and then the Lord brought me to Chi-Town. Okay, Maine, yes, I'm a Patriots fan. Um, go Seahawks, and uh, definitely don't want Denver to win. Um, but God, I have been working with young people that society says they're no good, they're troublemakers, they're worthless for 20 years. I know I don't look that old, do I? I'm kind of fly. I'm kind of fly. Um, I don't need your approval. And so, um, if you could show that next slide. Um, and so I was a youth pastor in Humble Park and love Humble Park. And everybody says I'm Puerto Rican, and I'm okay with that. I should have been born Puerto Rican, but I wasn't. And so God and I had this conversation as I was youth pastoring, and I just couldn't get people to have the same passion that I had for those that were on the fringe. And so my daddy and I had a conversation, and, and um, God talks to me in kind of like this really weird way that I connect. He's like, yo, 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 baby girl. Baby girl, what's up? And I'm like, what's up, daddy? And we had this conversation. He was like, okay, so you're no longer going to be the youth pastor. I understand that. I needed you to step down. And so what I'm calling you to do is I want you to move into a gang neighborhood. I was like, daddy got jokes. <laughs> That's funny. I'm like, Lord, look at me. <laughs> I'm fine. I am too fine to walk the streets of Humble Park. Like, brothers will be hitting on me, you know, asking me to marry them. Like, I was your idea. You did this. <laughs> I am fine. <laughs> and God was like, you ain't that fine. I was like, you're right. <laughs> I could lose a few pounds, you know. I got a little bit of, you know, donut, muffin, bakery going on here. You're right. And so, as, as I was having this conversation with the Lord, and you know how we love to debate with the Lord, the Lord simply said one thing to me that changed my mind. How many, how many of y'all know that sometimes all the Lord has to do is say one thing and you're just, you're sold, right? I mean, am I the only one he has to convince about things? Because <laughs> I don't just say yes every time he's like, go. I'm like, what? Like, 
<laughs> I'm fine. And anyway, and so the one thing that he said to me that convinced me to move into Humble Park, Beach and Spalding, the motherland of the almighty Latin King Nation was this. He said, I'm already in that neighborhood. That's my neighborhood. I already love those people. I'm not calling you to do anything special or I'm not calling you to be the savior. Like I already took care of that. I'm not calling you into a place where I'm already, where I'm not already present. But what I'm calling you to do is to be a light in a kid's darkness. And so I moved into this house here, uh, this two flat, and I ain't stupid. Um, I'm single, so I live on the second floor because if you want me, you got to work for it. Like, you're going to have to crawl up the sides and jump on and get a helicopter to like ricochet down to the, the roof. Like, I'm not stupid, right? I'm single. I'm on the second floor. That way I can hear you coming. And I got security like everywhere. Um, but that's a whole other issue. Um, bring me back when you have singles week and we'll talk more about it. And so if you, if you notice with this house, the most beautiful thing is, see that big, that lamppost that's right there in the front? It is the only one that is on the street and you can see it two blocks down. And it is a constant reminder to me of who I am and who I'm not, and that all God wants me to do is to be a light in a kid's darkness, and my babies have dark, dark lives. I have buried too many young people. I have visited too many people in those nasty, rotting, stinking, bed bug infested prisons for five minutes while I've waited for three hours just to get time with them. I hit the block every day. Don't know what I'm going to do. It's just me and the Holy Spirit. I just wake up and say, what are we going to do today? And he may say, go to Little Caesars, get some pizza, pass it around. He may say, start a basketball team. I go to court every time they need to go to court. I show up. I drive around at nine o'clock in the morning to see who's still asleep and didn't go to school. And I catch them off guard and say, go get your book bag. I'm taking you to school. Ah, oh, Miss Amy, come on, right? My house is a safe place for them. I'm a resource for them. I'm not their savior. But I walk life with them, with these young people. You see, most of the kids that I work with, they plan for their funerals more than they plan for their futures. I can ask a kid, what does it, what, what, what are you going to be? Let's dream, let's dream. I have this, this guy who's locked up right now. And I was like, let's dream. If money didn't matter, if education didn't matter, like, what would you want to do? What would you want to be? And he wrote me back and he was like, no disrespect, Mamie, but I just don't feel like dreaming right now because I don't even know what that means. And I'm not trying to get my hopes crushed. He said, I just want to get out of the hood. I just want to take my kids, my, my, um, my, my siblings out of the hood. And so the truth is that the reason why a lot of our young people are suffering from this lethal absence of hope, lethal absence of hope, is because there are no hope dealers willing to be courageous enough to just walk up to a kid and say, before you're a gang member, you are a kid. Before you're a gang member, you are Christ's creation. Before you're anything else, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Now, I don't say that because, you know, they won't know what the heck I'm talking about. But in my mind, I'm like, the anointing's flowing off of me. And whatever I say, they just going to feel it. Like, I'm just going to hug them and they'll know they're fearfully and wonderfully made, right? Like, they are desperate for hope dealers. You see, if someone can't imagine a future for themselves, then what they do right now doesn't matter. They won't care if they hurt you because they don't see a future for themselves. They don't care if they harm themselves. They don't care if they get high. They don't care if they out there uh, fighting. They don't care. They don't see a future for themselves. There is a lethal absence of hope. And we, as Christ, I mean, we as, as Christ's own, as those that know Christ, we are no better but we know hope. 
There's a difference. Those kids teach me as much as I teach them. But I've made a commitment to walk life with them. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that looks like. I pray I don't have to bury you. And the sad thing is, you, just, you know those kids. I just lost a kid recently. And praise God, they found his murderer. And that doesn't happen often. And you can just see the hopelessness in these kids. And so the scriptures say, because we are called to be light, and I think there's a a slide for this. It says, Jesus spoke to them saying again, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. He says, I've come as light into the world that whoever believes in me should not abide in darkness. I will lead the blind by ways they have not known. Along unfamiliar paths, I will guide them. This is a promise. This isn't just rhetoric. This isn't just, this is a promise. God says, I will lead the blinds by the way they have not known. Along unfamiliar paths, I will guide them. I will turn darkness into light before them. And I will make those rough places smooth. These are the things I will do. I will not forsake them. Lord, please let this be true for Raul. Please let this be true for Macho. Please let this be true for Gentry. Please let this be true for my babies, for my community, for my Chicago. Y'all, we are bleeding. It is a wound that no matter how many bandages we put on it, we are bleeding. And we're bleeding because we've lost hope. Our young people have lost hope. But Isaiah 61 says, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me. The spirit of the Lord God is upon you. Because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to grant those who mourn in Zion, to give them a beautiful headdress instead of ashes. I want them to have that beautiful headdress instead of their, you know, their, their, their caps. Their, their, I, I want them to see the beauty in their brokenness. It's very hard, I understand, for some people to look at gang members the way that I do. And the way that I see them, they are hurt, broken, lost children. And the gang gives them an opportunity to express their anger, to let it out. It's not healthy, but they do it. There's a story that I didn't plan on saying, telling you, but I'm going to tell you. This uh, pastor named Marvin Daniels had a conversation with a gang leader. And they both said, the gang leader said to him, you know what? We're in the same business. And the pastor was like, yeah, I don't sell that yay yay, so I don't know what you're talking about. And he was like, no, no, we're both in the business of recruiting people. He said, but there's a big difference between you, the church, and me. You see, when the kids go to school, they pass by me every day. When they go to the corner store, I'm right there. When they want some candy or when you hear the ice cream truck going, I'm the one that gives them dollars so that they can buy that that ice cream cone. But if they need you, they have to come find you. Where are we? We are so comfortable inside these walls called the church that our city, our communities are dying. Why do they have to come to us? Show me in the Bible where they walk into the church to be saved. We have to go out. We have to bring the the message of hope and salvation to them. And you don't have to be overkill with it. 
I have kids that it might be six months before I talk about Jesus. But let me explain something to you. Sometimes the only Bible a non-believer reads is you. You may be the only Bible that these kids read. And what are you saying to them? Are you saying I'm as broken as you? And I need Jesus? I always tell everybody, look, I'm a hot mess. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> I know I don't look it. <laughs> Give it about 30 minutes because I feel the sweat like on my scalp right now. I'm about to look like Diana Ross in a minute. But I am... <laughs> I am a hot mess, y'all, and I need Jesus. Like, I am desperate for Jesus. I am so humbled at times that God could call a hot mess like me to love on his people and walk life with them. You see, you can't, you can't scare a kid straight. You have to care him straight. Our kids are already scared enough. What they aren't is hopeful enough. You are called to be a light in darkness. And don't think you, you, you have an idea of what that really means. You have to be at the foot of God, the feet of God, seeking him, asking him, how can I be your light? To Anthony, who joined the gang because he doesn't have legal papers to be in this country. He couldn't get a job. He couldn't get in college. The soccer team that wanted him to travel with him didn't let him because he didn't have a social security number. And he has to feed his kids because his mom is sick. And instead of the church being a solution, the gang was right there and swooped him up. You see, you can't judge a book by its cover. And this is what I tell my kids all the time. But you also can't judge a book by its first chapter. <laughs> Did y'all hear what I just said? I, I don't know if y'all think I'm crazy or if you're like feeling this or... So I tell my kids, baby, you have a whole lot of book left to write. And the beautiful thing is, you can write whatever you want. And my master's degree just happens to be in written and corporate communications. <laughs> Lucky you! Stop looking at people as they present themselves to you. And start looking at people the way God sees them. His heart is breaking for my babies. His heart is breaking for our country. But he loves my kids. He loves you. Maybe somebody in this room right now needs a hope dealer themselves. You don't know what the person that is sitting beside you is going through right now. You have no idea. You have to be sensitive to the Spirit of God so he can show you and so he can give you a love that is unexplainable. How can I love one of my kids who uh, four months ago killed a rival gang member. He was high, he was driving, saw a rival gang member, started shouting Almighty Latin King Nation, uh, 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 GD Killer, and just shot him dead. And now a family is grieving and forever changed. But this is my baby. I wrestle with that, but I have to see him the way God sees him. Y'all, this work is not about you. It's not about me. I didn't want to sit right here. I wanted to sit over there. I prefer not to be seen so that God can show off. Get out of God's way and let him show off through you. 
I want these kids to know that they can be redeemed and that they have hope, not because of me, but because they are fearfully and wonderfully made, that they were God's idea and the path that they're on was not God's plan. But baby, we got a whole lot of book left to write. A whole lot of book left to write. And I close with this. If you can put that last slide up. This picture brings me to tears almost every single time. Because that's my prayer for my babies. And I end with this quote. And I want you to just stare at this picture. Just stare at it and feel it. Don't just look at it, but feel it. How can we give an answer to someone who asks about the hope they see in our lives if they don't even see it in our lives? You have the incredible privilege and the incredible responsibility of representing Christ and making a difference in the life of an unbeliever. And you might be the only image of Christ that a person ever sees. And if you think you're too small to make a difference, then you've obviously never spent the night with a mosquito. <laughs> and I end it here because time is up. You are called to be a light in someone's darkness. You are called to be a hope dealer. So if there's anybody here that wants to be a hope dealer, let me just hear you say amen. 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 And praise God. Thank you so much for the opportunity to share my heart with you. God bless you.